In 2022, Harris was appointed creative director of Nina Ricci. The French fashion and fragrance brand is famous for ultra-feminine and romantic styles. In the statement announcing his appointment, Nina Ricci wrote, Harris will bring up new perspectives on the archives and lifelong craftsmanship of the house. Was it daunting walking into that role of such an iconic legacy brand? It was extremely daunting. I think a story that I think gives a lot of context to this is I remember getting off the Eurostar for the first time in Paris and the driver is waiting with a sign that said Mr. Reed and I'm like my first day of work, I'm literally jittering. And I walk up, I'm like, like, bonjour. And he's like, hi, um, is your husband coming? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm Mr. Reed. And it kind of clicked that I was like, whoa, we, I have a lot of work to do. You know what I mean? Like just me having long hair and, you know, wearing a bit more of a fluid apparel is already setting everyone to call me Madame. I was like, okay. And I remember going to the first day at work, everyone was kind of like, is it, is he a man? Like, and it was a conversation that people were having. And I, and I was, you know, I'm very secure in myself and kind of demanded the space, but you know, being 26, the youngest creative director in history to be at that brand, like, it's a lot of pressure and also being someone that really stands for something. You know, the first show, you know, I was like, we're going to have boys, we're having transgender models, we're going to be having, you know, curve models, which especially in Paris is not something that you see that often. Um, and not as anything tokenistic, but just as who I am and what I stand for with my own brand, my own ethos, my own being. Um, and it was, you know, I'm not going to say battles, but a lot of me having to be a boss very quickly and being 26 and being hired as a creative and my creativity comes from being sensitive and really kind of almost going to this level of vulnerability that's quite traumatic within my designs from my childhood and, you know, being a queer person in today's society, but then also putting on a power suit and sitting in a meeting with a bunch of, you know, 60-year-old Frenchmen, you know, whether my company or the press, and having to justify, you know, decisions. So it's been a whirlwind, you know, experience thus far. And it's amazing, but it's, you know, it's intense. You talked about your debut show for them, which just happened. How did you feel? Oh, I felt amazing. I felt like, I don't want to cry, but it was like, I was watching it backstage on the monitor and my mom was sitting front row crying. And I remember being like, wow, if you could have told me this at nine years old, that I would be having a Paris debut with like a super diverse like group of individuals walking out in things that I could have only dreamt of when I was young, it made me, it made me really happy. And it's probably weird that I'm crying, but it, it did feel like so much of those literally twirling in curtains in my bedroom by myself, dreaming. And I had an Eiffel Tower. I painted on my wall when I was a kid. And I remember just being like, I'll be in Paris one day, I'll be there. So to be 26 and already there, it feels like, felt really special. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs>